Next, let's bring in a good friend of the income generation and a good friend of yours truly, uh, president, co-owner of Key Advisor Group in Delaware, and the author of the book, Common Sense Bull. Eddie, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me, Dave. So this is a commercial uh, by more, a, a more of an independent firm, somebody much like yourself. Uh, what's your take on the commercial? Do you feel it's informative? Do you feel it would motivate people to want to look into the company? Your thoughts? You know, it's the it's it's more to me. I feel like it's a more of a generic type commercial. You know, it talks about elevating and helping you achieve your goals, but it doesn't really define how they're going to do that. You know, and I understand why they probably want to be not too precise to try to attract people to come in. But I'm a big believer in education, and I think for someone to get value out of some commercial, you want to educate them a little bit as to what makes you different and why they may possibly be a fit for you or your family. So uh, not a huge fan of the commercial because I don't think there's a lot of education behind it. Uh, but again, I understand why from a business perspective, why they probably kept it, kept it more vague than more precise and educational. Now, Eddie, I know you believe in being a specialist um, because you know being a generalist is something that <clears throat> maybe you go to when you're healthy and everything's fine. But when there's a medical issue that's really, really important, you want to go to a specialist. And let's face it, planning for retirement, if you're within 10 years of retirement or are retired, uh, is something that's probably the most finan financially important, significant time of your life. So in that realm, specialty is important. Um, tell us about your specialty, your niche, and how it's different from most generalists. You know, we really try to laser focus on that retirement market that you just talked about, where people are more in the distribution phase of their life versus the accumulation phase. You know, we try to educate folks that there really is two phases to retirement, where the accumulation phase is where you're growing the assets. And then to your point, when you're 10 years away from retirement or closer, you have to start talking about preserving and generating income from the assets you've worked hard to focus on. So we don't shy away from the fact that we're not the strongest on the accumulation side uh, because we decided 20 years ago to really focus on the distribution side of investing uh, using things like individual bonds versus bond funds really focusing on risk management versus trying to capture 100% of the upside of the market and really just again staying really close contact with our clients because as you know the interest rate market is just as volatile as the stock market so it's not a set it and forget it type of strategy so it's my opinion that it's impossible to try to be all things to all people in this complex industry. You really got to laser focus on something that you feel you would enjoy, so that way you can try to be the best at what you do. Well, a man after my own heart. That's why you and I are, are, are such close friends. Um, but because our viewers don't really want to want to hear a bromance going on here, I want to play another commercial. Uh, I want to get your take on a commercial from a financial advisor, Matthew Phillips Brown. And uh, tell me what you think after you listen to this. Imagine you needed the service of a 911 call, whether it be the police, the ambulance, or the fire department. But at your time of need, they were closed. Think of the tragedy that could take place. Now let's take that same scenario and apply it to the banks being our financial advisors. Banks don't open late on weekends, and they generally close at 4 p.m. and in some cases 8 on weekdays. You can never get a bank advisor to come visit you, which means if you don't make it before close, tough luck. Well, guess what? I don't close, and I'll come directly to you. I am Matthew Phillips Brown. Okay, well, that's obviously a different twist. In the 45 seconds or so we have left, what are your thoughts on this and its effectiveness for our income generation members? So I'll tell you what I like and then I'll tell you what I don't like. Uh, what I don't like is him kind of comparing himself and kind of downgrading his competition. I'm a believer that you shouldn't do that. I just think it's a professional courtesy to really focus on what brings value to your clients versus trying to knock someone else's business model. What I do love about it is him basically sharing his value proposition as he's there for his clients seven days a week. And I think if you focus more on that on the commercial, it's much more impactful and much more powerful versus basically saying he will do it and someone else won't. Because again, I just think it adds a little bit more credibility to himself if he just focuses on him and his values versus trying to maybe minimize someone else. Eddie, we need to leave it there on this block. We'll be back in just a minute after commercial break. You stay with us too. We'll be back here on The Income Generation. <music> 
Welcome back to Income Generation. Now it's time to bring back for one last segment our good friend, Eddie Gabor, co-owner of Key Advisors Group in Delaware and the author of the new book, The Common Sense Bull. So, Eddie, I know that when people come to see you for the first time in your office, they, have some, they must have some preconceived notions about different firms, many times notions that they got from watching these advertisements on television. So what are some of the, the things that you hear or maybe some of the hurdles that you face being an independent firm uh, when folks first come in? Maybe misunderstandings that maybe you need to make clear to, to, to an investor. You know, I think one of the misconceptions with independent firms is that they don't have the resources that maybe a household name has. Uh, you know, some of the bigger companies that you'll see running commercials or whatnot. And so we spend a lot of time educating them on the fact that our independence, we feel, brings actually additional value uh, because we don't have any allegiance to any one type of strategy. So we can really have an open architecture type of portfolio model with a tremendous amount of resources behind the scenes. So you may walk in our office and see, oh, there's only five people working in the office and think that we're a small operation. Uh, but the reality is we're small in numbers in regards to the amount of people working at the office, but the resources we have behind the scenes rivals those of the largest firms in the country. Sure. And you know, it's funny because um, if you think about the, the that's a big misconception. Everybody thinks, gee, the big firms, the big firms, they have more depth of bench, but they don't realize that there's, there's really a, a dual fiduciary role, especially for publicly traded companies. They've got a fiduciary role to maximize value for their shareholders, but then a fiduciary role to its clients. And I'm not sure if you were that publicly traded company, how you can fulfill both fiduciary roles without creating some conflict of interest. Can you? No, and you know, that's a very, very good point. And again, I think another advantage that indiv independent advisory firms like us have, obviously we're not publicly traded. So uh, when we're building our investment strategies under the fiduciary model, we're doing the best that we possibly can and take keeping our uh, best interests of our clients ahead of our own, as you know, as an investment advisor representative. And I think having a fiduciary is something else that we've done a lot of educating on. Uh, and it's important for people to know who they're they're working with and what type of standards are held to. Nice, as usual. All right, Eddie, thanks so much for being on the show today. We appreciate you having here, as being here. And you stay with us too. We'll be back here with more on the Income Generation. I'm David Scranton. We'll be back in a moment.